Channel 2, WBBM Television, Chicago. Live from Chicago's afternoon news team. This is First Edition. Good afternoon, I'm Lester Holt. And I'm Adele Arakawa. A chemical scare forces the evacuation of a shopping mall in the Chicago area. All 150 stores in the Stratford Square shopping mall in West Suburban Bloomingdale are shut down at this hour after more than a dozen people were hurt in a chemical spill at a store in the mall. It happened near the loading dock of the mall's Marshall Field store. More than uh, 19 people in all were hurt. They were taken to the hospital complaining of nausea and dizziness. Officials say the chemical leaked into an air conditioning unit when the tank holding the acid was hit by a truck making a delivery at the mall. 220 gallon tank, about half of it spilled. It contains a chemical substance that's used in our chilling system. We evacuated the mall in the interest of safety and we're testing right now. We've flushed everything out. We're testing right now to make sure everything is safe. Our Burley Hines is live in Bloomingdale. He joins us now with the very latest Burley. Is that mall going to reopen this evening? Lester, even as we speak, if you look behind me, you can see people filtering back into the mall right now. Just a few minutes ago, people from the mall came out, the executive types came out and said that it's all clear, you can come back into the mall now. Now, th that means that the Environmental Protection Agency now has given the all clear. They've cleared out the fumes from the sewer system, they've clean cleared out the fumes from the store, and they're going back in. By the way, that final count... Uh, the final count for the uh, injured was around 32. Most of them were not seriously hurt. Uh, some of them just had a few breathing problems. Live from the Stratford Square Mall in Bloomingdale, Burley Hines, Channel 2 News. Okay, Burley, thanks for the update. The top story in world news, Presidents Bush and Gorbachev ran into a last-minute snag on a nuclear weapons agreement, but they are close to signing other arms control agreements. The second day of the superpower summit was filled with talking, but the Soviet leader took time out for something else, which thrilled his audience. Our political editor, Mike Flannery, is in Washington and joins us now with a live report. Mike? Well, Adele, the latest word is that the signing of those agreements has been delayed. It's still expected this evening, but uh, apparently talks are taking a bit longer than had been expected. Something else that uh, you might not expect here at a superpower summit is something of the aura of a superstar. No, it wasn't the return of Elvis or a reunion of all four of the Beatles. It was just a visit. It has been just a visit by a president of a nation that most of us grew up regarding as America's arch adversary. It's clear, though, that things have changed. He may be facing political problems back home, but Mikhail Gorbachev was again greeted as a world-class hero here on the streets of Washington today. Security forces appeared panicky in the face of Gorbachev's decision to get out of his limousine, but the lunchtime crowd loved it. The business end of this trip, the Soviet president's negotiations with the American president, seemed to slow down. Instead of last night's talk of surprise history-making breakthroughs, the two leaders acknowledged that their talks on weapons and world trade have run into problems. We always have complications, but we also we, we measure it not by whether the gla glass is half empty or the glass is half full. I will say this, uh, we have gone two-thirds of the road in our talks. One sticking point has been Gorbachev's attempt to win the American trade concessions that go along with most favored nation status. He was angry at a meeting with congressional leaders today who have rejected giving most favored nation status to the Soviet Union, even though the U.S. government has granted it to China's bloodily repressive government. You have now given the MFN treatment to China after Tiananmen in Peking. What shall we do? What should we do for us to, for you to give us uh, MFN? Maybe we should introduce presidential rule in the Baltic and at least fire some uh, uh, rounds in the Baltic. Well, some Americans with ties to the Baltics have been firing verbal rounds at Gorbachev here today. Among them have been about a thousand people from Chicago. We'll tell you a lot more about that on the 5 o'clock news, as well as keep you posted on the status of those important arms agreements that Bush and Gorbachev are expected to sign tonight. Mike Flannery reporting live from Washington. Back now to Chicago. Thank you very much, Mike. And while the presidents were meeting at the White House today, the first ladies went to Wellesley College near Boston to speak to the graduating class. Some of the students had protested the choice of Mrs. Bush as their speaker, saying that she is known only for her husband's achievements. 
But she appeared to get the last word today and gave the graduates a message with humor and grace. Barbara Bush and Raisa Gorbachev, two very different women, walk side by side, greeting the graduating seniors and guests at the women's college. Mrs. Gorbachev has a PhD in philosophy. Mrs. Bush dropped out of college to get married. And today, she joked about the fact that some students didn't want her to be the commencement speaker. Now, I know your first choice today was Alice Walker. <laughs> Known for the color purple. Instead, you got me. Known for the color of my hair. <laughs> Mrs. Bush told the graduates that no matter what careers they choose, the most important investment they can make is a human one. At the end of your life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, winning one more verdict, or not closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with a husband, a child, a friend, or a parent. Her daughter Dorothy was in the audience as Mrs. Bush said that kids come first. Your success as a family, our success as a society, depends not on what happens in the White House, but on what happens inside your house. The First Lady had the crowd laughing with her closing remarks. Who knows? Somewhere out in this audience may even be someone who will one day follow in my footsteps and preside over the White House as the President's spouse, and I wish him well. <laughs> Mrs. Gorbachev also spoke to the graduates with the help of a translator and said that women have a special mission of peace, mercy, and kindness. A couple from West Suburban Lombard is all smiles today, all smiles, and $42 million richer. Ed Sherwin, a retired carpenter, and his wife Dorothy came forward today, the big winners in the May 19th Illinois State Lottery drawing. They're splitting the money with their five grown kids, and yes, it came as a giant surprise. Go ahead. All, all, all I've ever asked for is to be left alone and, and be left comfortably. I'm wait, we retired and we're waiting for the, the uh, goal to come and finally it's came. What, what do the numbers so you mean? you expect to be left alone now? No, I guess not. <laughs> Sherwin's granddaughter Leslie says she'll use her share for a trip to Disneyland. Grandpa says that's fine with him. Still ahead in this half hour. Three men who try to sell more than a million dollars worth of cocaine get a big surprise when something goes wrong. Also ahead, a bionic man comes to Chicago offering a chance to see how medical miracles work up close. And a state of emergency in Mississippi where flash floods destroy hundreds of homes. This is the tan that's too hot to handle. This is the marathon tan. And this beautiful tan? It came out of this beautiful tube of Estee Lauder's self-action tanning cream. With no sun at all, it'll give you a rich tropical glow in just a few hours. So forget the baking and still come out golden. No one will ever know. Self-action tanning cream, now at Carson Perry Scott. Hi, I'm Chuck Woolery. I love cars, but I hate grease, just like this greasy engine. But now there's clear magic. Just spray it on, hose it off, and grease and grime disappear like magic. You see this grease spot on my shirt, clear magic and water, and it's gone. It's non-toxic, it's non-flammable, and it's totally biodegradable. Clear magic has a thousand different uses around the house, but don't tell your wife or it'll disappear. Like magic. Clear magic. Tonight, following the Bulls-Pistons game, we'll have complete post-game coverage live from the stadium and all the latest news on an expanded edition of the 10 o'clock news tonight. Take a Look to Juul for all your household needs, like cheer-free or cheer-powder detergent. A gallon bottle or 136-ounce box is $5.99 with coupon. Take a for extra softness, try Downey Fabric Softener. A 96-ounce bottle is $2.99 with coupon. And save on a four-pack of Ivory Personal Size Soap, only 99 cents. For household needs. Take a look at an old friend, Jewel. With Handy Andy, you've got it made. Get a grip on yard work. A soft grip. Garden grip tools are at Handy Andy. This foam padding protects your hands from blisters and fatigue. Gives you a firm grip. Cleans up easily and comes attached to a high-quality, true-temper tool. Right now, this leaf rake or hole is 9 dollars 
get a shovel or bull rake for $12.99. With Handy Andy, you got it made. Three men are in custody today after state police and federal agents pulled a big drug bus in suburban Bolingbrook. One suspect allegedly tried to run over a police officer and was arrested at gunpoint. The other two put up no resistance. The three were nabbed as they tried to sell cocaine to undercover officers. Police seized cocaine valued at more than a million dollars plus guns and cash. The arrests followed a month-long investigation. Some dramatic scientific advances are literally changing the face of modern medicine. The fictional bionic man of the 1970s is approaching reality in the 90s, with doctors now able to replace many body parts, organs, and even skin. Susan Anderson reports on how replacement medicine is saving and enhancing lives. The last time Chicagoans saw Alyssa Smith was in January, when she left the hospital to go home after receiving part of her mother's liver. Today, Alyssa and her family are back in Chicago. It's the first time since her historic operation. Alyssa's been doing great. Um, her lab work is super. She's a normal two-year-old, absolutely. Um, she does anything she wants to do physically. The Smiths are here to open a new exhibit called Bionics and Transplants at the Museum of Science and Industry. But Alyssa wasn't the only celebrity on hand. The Vietnam veteran who lost both legs in the war and is now a star track and field athlete was here too. Bill Demby is perhaps best known for his TV commercial. Demby showed off his artificial legs today by playing basketball with Chicago's Midnight League right in the Great Hall of the Museum. I don't jump as high as I used to or move as fast as I used to when I'm playing the game. And to me, that's more important. At the exhibit, visitors are greeted by a skeletal mannequin sporting a full complement of bionic parts. Also on display are various artificial valves, organs, a larynx replacement machine, and an entire artificial mouth. Other highlights show human skin growing in a petri dish and the latest treatment for burn victims. The exhibit makes clear how replacement parts and transplants work. Doctors successfully transplanted the cornea of the eye more than 85 years ago. That was the first transplant. Today, doctors can put into the body more than 20 different organs and devices. There are some remarkable materials in here, from plastics to ceramics, which, is, which are used as body parts. And I think, most important, science of the future is here, right now. The Bionics and Transplant exhibit will be at the museum through September 3rd. Susan Anderson, Channel 2 News. The Museum of Science and Industry is open every day except Christmas. It's now or never. The Bulls must win tonight or a thrilling season is over. It's game six against Detroit. There are threats of mayhem in the air, and it could be a nasty scene in the stadium tonight. Johnny Morris, what's that all about? Well, Lester, it basically revolves around Bill Lambeer. As you know, he's a pretty rough and tough basketball player, and he's uh, knocked a few Chicago Bulls around. Well, today, Scottie Pippen was fined $2,000 by the NBA for knocking Bill Lambeer around. We've got the videotape of that. Let's take a look at it. Remember this happened late in the game the other night. Down went Lambeer with a necktie tackle by Scottie Pippen, and Lambeer reportedly got up and in a few seconds there said something to Michael Jordan about the fact that if Pippen doesn't get ejected from this game, you better watch it or your head's going to go if you try and drive the lane in game six. So that is a provocative statement if he did make it in those words, in fact, or not. But anyway... It's food for thought that tonight could be a real rough game. If Lambeer happens to give Jordan a little push or a little extra shove or to Scottie Pippen, there could be fisticuffs. Usually in an important game like this, the sixth game, the Bulls will be out of it if they lose, and the Pistons don't want to lose it because then that goes to a seventh game. You never know what could happen in a seventh game. Usually they kind of mind their P's and Q's and play, uh, play basketball. Let's hope that's the way it works out today, that there is no rough stuff. We wouldn't want anybody to get thrown out of the game just because of a, uh, of a foul or something like that. We want the Bulls to win it. Fair and square, right? All right. The Bulls are favored by one point, by the Is way. Is that right? Yes. I'll because of the out. home crowd. That's about as narrow as <laughs> That's as you this can get. much. Thanks, yeah. Johnny. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, Terry says tomorrow may be the warmest day so far this year. We'll have the weekend forecast. And Coca-Cola pulls the plug on a game that makes you an instant winner but makes the company a big loser. Okay, so Michaels has frames, party supplies, decorations. What else? Well... <laughs> Do I have to draw you a picture? At Michael's, you can find a complete selection of brand name art supplies all at reasonable prices. A wide variety of paints, watercolors, markers, sketch pads, brushes, and even fabric paint, along with a helpful, friendly staff to assist you. So when you're looking for art supplies at Michael's, you'll never draw a blank. Oh, so what do you think? A kiss? Oh, um, not right now. You, you really don't want to kiss me. 
Dangerous. Very dangerous. Give me a minute, honey. Don't let morning breath ruin a good morning. Get Scope. Scope has two powerful ingredients to kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Didn't I, I hear something about a kiss? Right here. Right now. Kiss me. It is time for a kiss. Scope. The best thing, first thing in the morning. Hey, you. Put that kiss right here. It's Red Lobster's Lobster Fest. Try a rock lobster tail with mmm, scampi, and fried shrimp. Our lobster and 15 shrimp special. Just $10.99. Only at Red Lobster. Hey! Don't wanna just drive. I wanna make some money. Before you choose a body shop, do they know where to look for hidden damage? What about unibody construction? Are they skilled in the latest technology? How about color matching? Can they deliver? If you don't know, you better get Mako. Hi, I'm Steve Baskerville. What should you do in case of an emergency? Send for Channel 2 Rescue 911 guy. Include a self-addressed stamped envelope. It may save your life. A rash of tornadoes have plowed through the western part of the state of Texas. One of them touched down in the town of Spearman. Several homes, a church, and a number of vehicles were destroyed. No injuries are reported. Residents say a much bigger tornado that would have wiped out their community lifted back into the clouds just minutes before reaching Spearman. Damage in the town is estimated at $5.5 million. In Mississippi, residents of Vicksburg were hit with some of the worst flash flooding in years. Heavy rains pushed several feet of water from the Mississippi River into nearly 200 homes. Nobody was reported hurt. Authorities say floodwaters have started to recede, but many residents won't be able to return to their homes until after the weekend. Harry Votwin's weekend forecast for us is coming up. But first, here's Bill Curtis in the newsroom with headlines from tonight's edition of the 5 o'clock news. Bill? We have an unusual kind of snafu creating big problems that are here today. A telephone problem among, among air traffic controllers forced authorities to shut down the airport for a time, creating some headaches for travelers, you can imagine. Then, Lithuanians Americans from Chicago join in a huge protest of President Gorbachev's visit to Washington. And Dick Tracy, the movie, is creating new interest in the Dick Tracy comics. John Drummond will have a report, and we'll have those stories, Siskel's weekend picks, and a live update on the Bulls-Pistons game coming up not far from right now. Thank you, Bill. And Harry's here with the weather. Well, Lester and Adele, tomorrow, in between the showers, it'll heat up, the sun come out, and it'll get close to 90 even, but then suddenly there'll be a downpour, and it'll go back to cool again, so it's a wild, late spring-like day. Are you ready for that? I'm ready for anything at this point. Anything, How about you? anything warm <laughs> will take, Harry. Okay, well, today was warm. We got to 85. It's the warmest since April 25th when we hit 87. It did hit 87 today at Midway, but that's no longer the official station. Not since 1980 when we moved it out to O'Hare. 58 was the low, and tonight will be warmer than that even. It's 87 still at Midway. Gary, 84. And the lakefront, which has been only in the low 50s and 60s lately, jumped up to 83. So folks downtown really felt a real burst of summer-like heat on this first day of June. Humidity is 48, but that's quite a lot for these temperatures. The breeze southwest 23. We'll talk more about humidity on the 5, how we relate it to dew point and what that means. Very intense storms close to the area that Lester just mentioned down in the Panhandle around Spearman and Perryton. They have more tornado watches up tonight all the way to the Dakotas and out through Nebraska. Showers as close to us now as southwest Wisconsin to the west of Madison. The warm air flow on this current weather map is from the Gulf of Mexico coming around this high in the Atlantic. So we've got that big swoop up from the Gulf, which will remain here through tomorrow. Then Sunday, we start to get westerly winds moving in and bringing in slightly cooler weather. Tonight, widely scattered thunderstorms, but a few of those early this evening. Most of them will come after midnight. Low will be 66 with brisk south winds. Then for tomorrow, variably cloudy, in between showers and thunderstorms. It could warm way up into the 80s, and the brisk winds south to southwest will keep it warm all over the city. So, uh, you know, dress calmly. I mean, dress uh, coolly tomorrow and stay calm. <laughs> stay calm. But dress, dress calmly, calmly too. <laughs> Thanks, Assuming Harry. Colors. When we come back, a Coca-Cola contest that loses its fizzle and Cher comes to Tinley Park for opening night at a new theater as workmen rush to finish their work in time for her concert.
People are coming from everywhere to play the $10 million blockbuster video game. Because the more you play, the more you can win. Win instantly or collect game pieces to win. Trips to the new Universal Studios Florida where you can see the stars and ride the movies. With transportation by US Air, America's most frequent flyer. Or up to $100,000 in cash. Millions of prizes in the $10 million blockbuster video game. Drop in and play. The Metro Regional Laser Center on standard operating procedure. If you need surgery, perform a procedure that could result in a quicker, easier recovery. The Metro Regional Laser Center. Yes. Talk to your doctor and call the Metro Regional Laser Center now for a free booklet and to arrange a consultation. It's one operating procedure. And thank you. It should be standard for anyone facing surgery. The Metro Regional Laser Center at St. Margaret Hospital and Health Centers. Terrific sweater. Cost a lot? Not at Burlington Coat Factory. Hey, real sporty. Expensive? Not at Burlington Coat Factory. Great designer suit. Get a raise? Don't need one at Burlington Coat Factory. With so much for men, why do they call it Burlington Coat Factory? Because they have more of these than anybody. Besides, ever try to say Burlington men's suit, sport coat, shirt, tie, blazer, slacks, jeans, sweater coat factory? Nobody makes fun time people moving trucks like GMC. And right now, there's never been a better time to get your feet wet. Right now, your Great Lake GMC truck team in Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana has a bundle of people moving GMC trucks and vans ready to go. So play it smart. The deal you make is bound to be off whopper. Get yours today from the Great Lake GMC truck team. Don't let a big one get away. Now get $1,000 cash back on new GMC Suburbans. The Coca-Cola Company has canned its big summer marketing campaign because it left a bad taste with some people. The so-called magic cans looked like regular cans of classic Coke, but contained cash or prizes inside. Some customers found defective cans. The pop-up mechanism jammed or chlorinated water leaked from the can. Coke has scrapped the promotion and it will fizzle out completely by mid-June instead of mid-August. Work crews this afternoon are racing to finish the area's newest outdoor music pavilion, the World Music Theater, a 45-minute drive from downtown Chicago in southwest suburban Tinley Park, is touted as a world-class concert space. And as Mike Chilin has reported, it has taken some world-class construction work to complete the project. It is an outdoor theater that, simply put, will be the blueprint for many others around the world. But it's also a theater that Cher will open tomorrow night. And so today, workers were busy anchoring down seats, setting up sound systems, and painting girders, all in an effort to complete the last second construction and finish the theater by concert time tomorrow. We had a little meeting due to the rain and the elements that we had in the past. Uh, we all pulled in here so that we get the stage and everything done. And now that the weather is cleared up, everybody's on the outside and we're we're uh, on a fast track and we should have everything done and ready by tomorrow afternoon. A feat that, given the weather of late, is literally amazing and at the same time can be directly attributed to the tireless work ethic of the theater's south side workers. There's only one word to describe them, it's awesome. Uh, everybody who's been saying uh, uh, the last three weeks have seen the site the last three weeks saying, will it be ready, won't it be ready, and now out here today everybody's saying, oh, it looks wonderful and it's ready. They've done a magnificent job, and without them, we would not be able to open tomorrow night. But tomorrow night is only a day away, and there are still a number of things that must be done, things that take time, and rattle patients. We've been through some last minute projects before, but uh, uh, the nerves have held up. Uh, we're professionals and uh, tomorrow night we'll prove that. And so it's just one day left to go. It appears as if the efforts of the more than 500 workers who've been going at literally an on-stop pace since this project began have accomplished their goal. The Herculean effort of bringing one of the world's finest outdoor music theaters right here to South Suburban Chicago. In Tinley Park, Mike Chilling is Channel 2 News. There is only one obstacle left before the theater can open, a safety test, and that is set for tonight. Theater officials are confident the theater will have no problems passing the test. Coming up, Bob Wallace proves that good things come in small packages. And where's Wallace? Get a dollar off. Jew will make saving easier than ever with our dollar off coupon sale. Get a dollar off. Look for Jewel's newspaper coupons and get a dollar off a wide variety of menu favorites. Get a dollar off. From boneless, skinless chicken breast to whole watermelon. From Oscar Mayer bacon to six packs of RC or 7-Up. 
What a selection. What a sale. Get a dollar off. So don't miss it. The dollar off coupon sale. Only a jewel. The pure, clear reproduction of an image. In big screen video, there is one master. To those who have turned over every stone trying to find a large selection of Mitsubishi, we present this master. And right now, Highland is offering all Mitsubishi products with no payments and no interest till January 1991. So if you're looking for Mitsubishi, can you afford not to look at Highland? It's a total, absolutely final clearance at New York Carpet World. These carpets already cut to $8.99. Final markdown, $5.88. Another group, premium carpets that were sale priced at $12. Final markdown, $6.88. Hundreds more, every excess carpet. Prices slashed without regard to cost or profit. To clear the decks, we'll give you padding free and credit free with no payments till 1991. It must be a total sellout. It must be done by Saturday night. Hurry to New York Carpet World. Not three, not two, but one. One coat hammerite means you don't need a primer or an undercoat, and there's no unsightly rust. Ah! Sorry, Marvin. Just one generous coat stops rust on gates, garden furniture, swings, bikes, cars, oil rigs, and gives a tough hammered finish. Hammerite comes in 14, 14, 14! Thank you, Marvin. Attractive colors plus white. Remember, no primer, no undercoat, no rust. That's one coat hammerite with glass guards. All right! Now available in Arizona. Box Home Center, Hoff Richter's West Side Lumber, Bell. You think Bob can top yesterday's performance? I don't know. Let's He's going to have to go some, I think. <laughs> Big isn't always better, and Bob Wallace is going to show us why. He is in Hillside today. Hello, Bob. That's right. We were at the Holiday Inn in Hillside. It is called the Spring Fling, the 1990 Chicagoland Dollhouse and Miniature Show. We'll give you an idea of some of the stuff behind me. Look in my hand. These are little things you put in dollhouses. Little bags of chips and bacon soda cans and boxes and stuff. Everything is done to scale here. And uh, it is really some pretty fantastic stuff. Now, let's move along. We're going to try to show you the parts of the show in about this tiny little birds and little bird feeders that you can put in your miniature houses. And we have tiny little people, of course, to populate miniature houses. Look at these little tiny little people and the detail is just fantastic. Moving right along, we have some tiny little meals. No cicadas, I must tell you, but tiny, tiny little meals of all sorts of food and, and it looks uh, good enough to eat. Over here, of course, you go to furnish your house. You have chandeliers, tiny little chandeliers. Look at this one here. This one is worth what? $1,200. It's all Austrian crystal, all beaded by hand. Amazing stuff here. Amazing, amazing stuff. Jewelry for your little tiny figures. Little tiaras here. Look at these little tiny tiaras. And this is what they look like on, on one of the dolls. Look at that, little Marie Antoinette. We have all sorts of stuff. This is Jackie Deber. She's the producer. This is open to the public when? Saturday and Sunday, 10 to 4. How much? Four bucks. Four bucks to get in. Okay. Right. Holiday Inn out in Hillside, Saturday and Sunday, 10 to 4, and it's four bucks to get in. Look at, now I get little, look, I got to show you the animals first. Of course, you got to furnish your little uh, dollhouses with animals. There's little cats and stuff here, and little cat people, little kind of fun things. We're going to quickly try to show you the dollhouses. Of course, you have to have all these miniatures. You have to have dollhouses to put them in. They even have the flashing on the roofs and stuff. Amazing stuff. And we'll try to get one more item in. This is all actual. Jimmy, can you get over here? Actual sterling silver. And it's all made in dollhouse size. The stuff is gorgeous. The Holiday Inn in Hillside all weekend. The Spring Fling, the 1990 Chicagoland Dollhouse and Miniature Show. Fascinating stuff here. Come on out. And it ranges in price from 50 cents to over $1,000. So you got some fantastic stuff at the Holiday Inn in Hillside. Back to you. Okay, Bob. We got it in. Thank you. It's a shame we don't have girls now, is it? <laughs> that wraps up first edition for this week. Thanks for joining us. The news continues now with Bill and Walter in the newsroom and the 5 o'clock news. Gentlemen. And here's our top story. O'Hare, world's busiest airport, brought to a near standstill today, all because of a cable that was cut causing computer problems and flight delays. The worst is now over. Most of the delays have been cleared up, but an investigation is underway into how it happened. Two reports on it tonight, beginning with Jim Avila. The planes were stacked up five and six deep this afternoon at O'Hare Field, and for about an hour, there was no way out. The FAA control tower at O'Hare lost phone service and could not communicate with its main computers or main radar screens housed 30 miles away in Aurora. Without that communication link, uh, in order to, to manage airplanes, it was necessary to hold the outbounds on the ground and to, to delay the inbounds from arriving here. 
The FAA tower at O'Hare controls takeoffs and landings at the airport, but the Chicago airspace is controlled in Aurora, where the FAA monitors incoming and outgoing flights. The two FAA centers and their computers are connected by phone lines. When that phone line was cut, air traffic control was impossible. Planes in the air were kept there. Those on the ground were not allowed to leave. Passengers added an hour to their trips. Well, they told us uh, when we landed that we would be delayed um, until the radio communications were restored here in Chicago. They couldn't put the plane up in the air from Cleveland until they got the go-ahead from Chicago. So they made uh, three announcements, uh, whose extended about uh, 20 minutes each time, that uh, we were to be held on the ground at Waterloo for uh, traffic congestion here in Chicago. By late this afternoon, most flights were again on time. The airlines reported only occasional delays. Illinois Bell says the FAA line was accidentally cut inside this building at O'Hare. The phone company was removing old wires and cut power to a new one by mistake. The quick recovery here at O'Hare was aided by the fact that the computers, the phones, the radar screens all went down during an off-peak hour. The heaviest loads here at O'Hare are 7 in the morning till 9 in the morning, 4 in the afternoon till 7 in the evening. This shutdown happened at noon. At O'Hare Field, Jim Avila, Channel 2 News. Most of the delays were cleared up by mid-afternoon. As Jim reported, when the uh, controllers lost the cable, they lost a vital communications link. But just how crucial was that loss to air safety? Lester Holt has been checking into that part of the story and is here now to tell us what he found out. Well, Walter, radar, of course, helps controllers keep planes from bumping into each other, but it takes more than radar to avoid gridlock in the sky. When Chicago Center and O'Hare lost their ability to exchange data, they also lost some of their ability to coordinate and forecast air traffic, an essential part of keeping the system moving. This computer shows in real time virtually every plane in the sky anywhere in the country en route to O'Hare. You get a real good, real good idea of where your rushes are. Here in the O'Hare radar room, they use it to know in advance when things will get busy. American 347 is going to maintain 3,000. While O'Hare radar controllers are guiding only departing and arriving planes within a 40-mile radius, they are constantly trading data about flights via computer with air traffic control facilities across the country, including Chicago Center, 25 miles away in Aurora. At Chicago Center, controllers are looking at the big picture, more than 115,000 square miles of airspace over the Midwest, much of it filled with air traffic coming to or leaving O'Hare. The high-speed data transmissions via telephone lines allow controllers at different facilities to coordinate air traffic and avoid traffic jams. In fact, before a controller sees an airplane, he sees a data strip about the flight spit out by computer. America 229, runway 27, up here for takeoff, flying the runway heading, wind 210. Late this afternoon, an FAA spokesman said at no time was the radar itself affected. Controllers at both O'Hare and Aurora could still see and talk to airplanes, but their inability to communicate with each other simply meant they couldn't handle as many planes in the air as they normally do. Gentlemen, we have another big story tonight. A suburban shopping mall evacuated and shut down following a toxic chemical spill. It happened at the Stratford Square shopping mall. Sulfuric acid leaked into the Marshall Fields air conditioning system. 32 people were stricken by the toxic fumes. Stratford Square is located in the western suburb of Bloomingdale. Burley Hines has more on the acid leak. Scores of shoppers and employees in the Stratford Square shopping mall were staggered by toxic fumes that escaped from a ruptured tank of sulfuric acid. Emergency equipment from Bloomingdale and five other West Suburban villages rushed to the scene to help people who complained of dizziness, nausea, and shortness of breath. Three area hospitals were alerted to handle the injured, most of whom were not seriously hurt. Adele Arakawa talked with some of those least affected by the spill. Ever since we walked in the store, you could smell it. And every, you walk out in the hallway and it was terrible. There were people going by in stretchers. Oh, Did it make you sick at your stomach? Yeah, it made you dizzy and you gave you a headache. You walked out of Marshall Fields when you could smell it, but then slowly the shit started moving its way towards the whole mom. Because of uh, the toxic nature it can be, depending on the amount that they've uh, you know, in inhaled or what have you, is that we're, we're concerned about mostly, we're concerned about everybody, but mostly the people that have uh, maybe heart conditions, people have respiratory problems. The accident happened when a 220-gallon tank of sulfuric acid was ripped during a delivery to the mall's engineering department at the rear of the complex. It's a 220-gallon tank, about half of it's filled. It contains a chemical substance that's used in our chilling system. We evacuated the mall in the interest of safety, and we're testing right now. 
There was added concern when some of the acid spilled into the sewer system. Fire departments quickly hosed down the area. We've flushed everything out. We're testing right now to make sure everything is safe. And we're not going to reopen until everything is safe. Bill and Walter, theoretically, the Stratford Square shopping mall is open for business. I say theoretically because even though the front door of the mall is open, some of the stores won't be open because the employees who ran out about five hours ago when the spill occurred have not returned to work. So some of the shops are closed down. We understand now that some of those shops won't be open until 6 or 7 tonight at a mall that closes at about 9 p.m. Live from the partially open Stratford Square shopping mall, Burley Hines, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Burley. Turning to a little positive news for the moment, the unemployment rate. In Illinois, it now stands at its lowest level in nearly 11 years, dropping a percent last month. And for the first time in 13 years, the unemployment rate in Illinois matches the national average, which is 5.3% for the month of May. Hiring in the construction industry and in the retail and service industries helped account for that brighter employment picture. Today, reporters got a first peek at what will soon be one of the city's biggest attractions, the Oceanarium, that enormous addition to the Shedd Aquarium. It will open in November, and it's the world's largest indoor marine mammal pavilion, featuring a recreation of the rugged coastline of the Pacific Northwest with hundreds of feet of nature trails, in addition to the seating. But the real stars of the Oceanarium will be the beluga whales. They're now at a zoo in Tacoma, Washington, that will arrive here as soon as their new home is finished. It is magnificent. Finished when? Do you have an estimate? They're thinking about opening in November, October, November. Um, they've pushed back. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. soon. Came around pretty fast. It's a massive undertaking, you can imagine. So the they may still be fluid on the opening day, but they want to get open in the sort of the latter part of October. <laughs> Try to imagine, if you will, Arnold Schwarzenegger loose on the planet Mars. Hard to figure? Well, you want to see Gene Siskel's review of Arnold's new movie coming up. Also, bricklayers hit the bricks. A strike that threatens to shut down dozens of construction sites in the Chicago area. And up next, the mystery is finally solved. There it is, if you can, it's a mystery if we can see it. The winners of the $42 million lottery finally come forward. Take away the names, and take away the pretty pictures, and you got two not from concentrate orange juices that look alike, but don't let looks fool you. In a blind nationwide taste test, more people said fresh and natural brand tasted closer to fresh squeeze than Tropicana Pure Premium. Taste it and see. Next to new fresh and natural, others pale in comparison. Don't just imagine delicious Carson's ribs sizzling in their tangy mouth-watering sauce. Enjoy them at home today. Dial Carson's now and your complete rib dinner will be ready in no time. Carson's, the place for ribs. Dial 312-C-A-R-S-O-N-S. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Jerry. We're the Vermont Ice Cream Guys. You know, we got so healthy eating Ben and Jerry's Light, people, people don't, don't recognize, recognize us anymore. <laughs> it is a new generation of value. Take a look at the Cutlass Sierra. It is a new generation Right. And just take a look at all you get. Cutlass Sierra. And with $2,000 cash back, it's just eleven six eighty eight. What a great way to drive. Come into your local Olds dealer today. It is a new generation of value. Somewhere, special memory is awaiting for you. Somewhere between a smile and a laugh. Somewhere, Somewhere your dreams can come true. Somewhere between the sky and the sea, between the night and the stars. Somewhere. Somewhere. Only on Princess, because it's more than a cruise. It's the love boat. State officials have pulled the passes that allow patients at the mental health center in Elgin to walk on the grounds. This follows two recent incidents in which patients with a history of violent crime walked off the grounds and escaped. One of them, a man who strangled and dismembered his sister, was recaptured by police last week in Chicago Heights. And a patient named David Youngerman, who tried to slash his father's throat, is still at large. 
Officials say they plan to tighten up the rules for issuing passes. Bricklayers and stonemasons hit the pavement today at construction sites throughout the Chicago area after contract talks broke down. Picket lines were up at the Harold Washington Memorial Library, now under construction in the loop, and about 100 other sites in the Chicago area. Key issues in the contract dispute, pay and contributions by contractors to the Bricklayers Pension Fund. No new talks are scheduled yet. The uh, big mystery tonight is finally over. The big winners have come forward. A retired carpenter from West Suburban Lombard and his family are $42 million richer tonight. Having won the May 19th Illinois State Lottery jackpot, as Adele Arakawa now reports. There are lots of ways to spend $42 million. You can have that home you always dreamed of, the car you could never afford. A woman can really discover a girl's best friend. 70-year-old Ed Sherwin of Lombard has had plenty of time to decide what to do with the $42 million he won several weeks ago in the Illinois State Lottery. But it looks as though he needs a little more time. So what, what's the family going to do with the money? No, uh, we don't know yet. <laughs> do you have any ideas? No, they're kind of wild yet. They're just let them sit. Sherwin plans to divide the winnings among his five children and 16 grandchildren, some of whom already have designs on their share. I want to go to Disney World. <laughs> This CB's grocery store in Villa Park is where the winning ticket was sold. The owners of the store will receive 1% of the grand prize. That totals out to about $420,000. Sherwin is a carpenter by trade, a business he has passed down to his sons. A man who has worked hard all his life, he has now provided for his family in a way he never dreamed possible. All I've ever asked for is to be left alone and, and be left comfortably. I'm wait, we retired and we're waiting for the... the uh, Gold is coming. Finally, it's came. What, what do the numbers mean? Do you expect mean? to be left alone now? No, I guess not. <laughs> Adela Arakawa, Channel 2 News. <laughs> this weekend's lotto prize rolled over from last Saturday's drawing. Now stands at $13 million. Looking ahead as we continue, Arnold Schwarzenegger flexes his box office muscle in his new movie, Total Recall. Gene will have a review and... In sports, the Bulls hope to outmuscle and outperform the Pistons in tonight's do or die game. Take a new look. look to Jewel to spice up your menu plans. Start with thick and hearty or garden style ragu spaghetti sauce. Just 99 cents a jar with coupon. Take a new look. Save $1 on Tombstone Singles or Tombstone Thin Crust Pizza with coupon. And for a zesty taste every time, it's McCormick Pepper. A four-ounce can is $1.59. To spice up your menus. Take a new look at an old friend, Jewel. Hot one. Hi. Yeah, this is the one we got around. Come on, Joe. This is the proving ground. The people of General Motors are keeping the lights on, making transmissions, engines, and electrical systems you can count on. Perfecting Chevrolets, Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs, and GMC trucks. And with 77 models redesigned and engineered, GM is putting quality on the road. Tonight, following the Bulls-Pistons game, we'll have complete post-game coverage live from the stadium and all the latest news on an expanded edition of the 10 o'clock news tonight. Even the most successful people doing business in Chicago don't always do business in Chicago. They go where their business takes them. And to get there, they rely on the one airline that means business in Chicago. American Airlines. From our new gateway to the world at O'Hare, American has over 450 flights to over 250 cities every business day. With the most non-stops to the most cities in Europe. The best domestic on-time record for as long as records have been kept. And the best people in the business. Next time you have to fly out of the office, let us prove that American means business in Chicago. It's clearly the name of the game in sports tonight is this is Bulls. It. This is it. This right? is it. It seems too hot for basketball, doesn't it? 80 <laughs> degrees outside. It's do or die time for the Bulls. They must beat the Pistons or their season is over. Game six tonight at the stadium. And it will be rocking, and I'm sure Howard Sedbury knows that. 
I guess so, Johnny. It's going to be rocking. It might really be rocking out on the court tonight when you get into a sixth or seventh game. Everybody talks about physical basketball between these two teams. I don't care who's playing in game six or game seven. It's going to be physical. But the league's keeping an eye on things like that. Scotty Pippen was fined $2,000 today for his body slam on Bill Lambeer in the last game up there. I talked to Coach Phil Jackson out of practice about it today, and he wasn't too happy about the fine. Well, it's interesting that, uh, you know, Edwards gets away with slapping a guy twice, and, uh, you know, he has a... Uh $3,500 fine and whatever the measurement quotas are, I guess Scotty's going to be the first victim of a hard foul and uh, uh, it's, it's surprising that we're the ones that uh, get pinned with it after all the hard fouls we've taken during those playoffs. We reportedly told Michael Jordan that if Pippen could do that, that he would get Jordan tonight and Jackson didn't seem too worried about that. Yeah, that's idle, I believe. Just mind games? Yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, the person I think that Lambier is, he's going to talk big. The pool's worked out at the Motoplex. There's Michael. He sees the cameras. He walks towards us and then fakes everybody out and does a 180, goes the other direction, staying with his policy of not talking between games. He didn't seem too shook up over Lambier's remarks, did he? And speaking of Bill Lambier, Detroit reporters got him to stop for an interview today, but didn't get much out of him. Do we expect, is there any reason to expect this to be any more physical than the other games, or uh, should we? No. How come? No comment. No comments. <laughs> How about the, the alleged thing you said to Jordan after the game, after the hard foul by Pippen, that you'd get it, uh, uh, that you would get him tonight? Was that accurate? Uh, no comment. Billy? <laughs> did, you, did you or did you not say it? Billy! All right, thank you, Bill Lambert, for those in-depth remarks before the game today. Makes it easy for the opposing fans not to like him, doesn't he? So uh, anyway, that's some of the action as far as uh, what's going to happen between Lambert and everybody tonight. As far as the Bulls are concerned, Johnny, you know what has to happen. They have to win this one and try and do it in Game 7. So it's going to be a lot of fun. The Bulls are a slight favorite at the stadium tonight. Of course, they're 2-for-2 two two here in the playoffs. Okay, we'll come back to you in about a half hour and check it out. Okay, Howard? All right, let's have a dinner. Okay. Uh, Bill Lambert, it's interesting that he stops to do interviews and then he says no comment. You know, it makes a lot of sense. In tennis, Michael Chang and Andre Agassi both won at the French Open today. Agassi was uh, victorious, but the officials didn't like his outfit. They felt that his colors were much too loud. They wanted a dominant white outfit and says he'll be banned if he wears the same uniform next year. Agassi's on the near side. He was upset about that, but went on to beat Arnaud Boic of France, 6-3, 6-2, and 6-love. Meanwhile, Chang lost the first two sets, but came back to defeat Christian Bergstrom, 2-6, 5-7, 6-love, 6-2, and 6-4. And we'll be back a little bit later to check out Public League Baseball, Public League Softball, the Chicago Bulls again, and the Trailblazers, who will be in the NBA Finals. You bet. Let's talk about the sport of bodybuilding for a moment. Arnold Schwarzenegger's name is very large. It also looms large on movie marquees around the country these days. But his new movie, Total Recall, may have a little bit too much muscle for more sensitive audiences, as Gene Siskel explains in his review. The new Arnold Schwarzenegger film, Total Recall, starts out great, great special effects, a fabulous premise, but I think it falls apart in a maelstrom of violence and foul language. In the movie, which is set in the 21st century, there's a revolution going on on Mars. Schwarzenegger is an agent. We don't know which side he's working on on Mars, but he is being chased in this coming scene by a bunch of Martian bad guys. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Johnny Cap. Where can I take you tonight? Drive, drive. Would you please repeat the destination? Anywhere, just go, go. We state a street and number. Shoot, shoot. I'm not familiar with that address. Would you please repeat the definition of hello? Fasten your seatbelt. Now, in that automated cab driver, you get a feeling that there might be a uh, sort of children's film going on here, but this picture is rough. It is rated R and rated R for good reason. There is foul language, as I said before. Take one of the most familiar four-letter words. It's used probably ten times by all kinds of people. There's a lot of derisive remarks made about women, and then there is violence that goes on and on. I don't understand why. Schwarzenegger is such a popular person. 
uh, with young people and with older people. Kids are going to get into this film, and I think if their parents could see what they were seeing, they would be stunned. As I said, however, the beginning action of this picture is quite strong, so a mixed review for me. Still, I can think of four better films to see this weekend. My weekend picks of good movies in town include the sequel, Back to the Future Part 3, a good conclusion to the series. I also happen to like Pretty Woman, a wonderful romance. Also, a tough film set in New York City and the street violence there, Q&A. And finally, the gay drama, Long Time Companion. All those films, I think, are more solid all the way through than Total Recall, which just has a great beginning. There's a lot more still ahead on our news at 5 o'clock, including some news that could affect every motorist in the Collar County surrounding Chicago. And in Northwest Indiana tonight, peace talks between the governor and the mayor of Gary on that issue of a third major airport. It's all still coming up. Hi, I'm Chuck Woolery. I love cars, but I hate grease, just like this greasy engine. But now there's clear magic. Just spray it on, hose it off, and grease and grime disappear like magic. You see this grease spot on my shirt, clear magic and water, and it's gone. It's non-toxic, it's non-flammable, and it's totally biodegradable. Clear magic has a thousand different uses around the house, but don't tell your wife or it'll disappear. Like magic. Clear magic. In all the world, there's only one way to travel. The Uniglobe way. That is a busy week. The flight's full, but we were able to find you a seat. Thousands and thousands of business travelers rely on Uniglobe for their travel needs. It's confirmed. Flight, car, and hotel. Uniglobe, doing more for business travel than anyone in all the world. One world, one you, one travel agent. My fries are better. Uh-uh. Hey, how'd you do that? I didn't. Inland Valley does it. They're called Curly Q fries. Inland Valley Curly Q's. Great tasting fries with a twist. How did they do that? Hacha, try some of these long branch fries. All the spice of the Wild West in every crispy coated fry. Well? Wild. <laughs> the wild western flavor of long branch fries by Inland Valley. Catch all the excitement of NBA basketball this weekend on Channel 2. Your local Ford dealer, Quality People, Quality Products, is a participating advertiser. It can happen when you do this, or this, or even this. These moments strain bladder muscles. So if you have a bladder control problem, this is when you need a TENS to protect when you move. Look at the difference. A TENS fit higher than bikini-style undergarments up around your natural waist to stay in place when you move. The result? A fit that helps protect when you need it most. A TENS gives you protection in motion. Volunteer with TLC, a festival to promote volunteerism and to seek out volunteers will be held on June 2nd. Call 906-2424. Prosecutors in Cook County are saying tonight that a 15-year-old Chicago boy will be tried as an adult for last month's shooting of a six-month-old girl. Little Roshanda Flowers was in her stroller being pushed by her mother when a rifle bullet hit her in the head near the corner of 41st and Cotton Grove. Authorities say that an eighth grader by the name of Jerome Dorset fired the shot from a vacant apartment in the Ida B. Wells housing project. He remains in custody at the moment, his bond having been set at $200,000. Original Holzer, a former Cook County judge who was convicted in the government's Operation Great Lord investigation as a free man tonight after having served nearly four years of a 13-year sentence for corruption. Holzer, shown in this picture during his trial, was convicted in 1986 of bilking thousands of dollars from attorneys and defendants who appeared in his court. He served his time at a prison in Wisconsin. As a convicted felon, Holzer loses his right to practice law. He also loses his Cook County pension. Striking Greyhound bus drivers are proposing an employee buyout of the company to save it from going bankrupt. Greyhound has been losing millions since the bitter strike began March 2nd. A company spokesman criticized the buyout offer, saying the driver's union has pushed Greyhound to the edge of disaster and now wants to make a profit from it. Illinois is one step closer to expanding its vehicle emissions tests to all of Chicago's collar counties. Familiar scene to Chicagoans is this. Now the Illinois House has passed a bill that would expand this testing to all of Lake, Will, DuPage, and Kane counties for the first time. The bill will also require testing for new cars every other year. 
until the vehicle is seven years old. Illinois is under federal court order to step up efforts to reduce car emissions. The city of Chicago met an important deadline today in its efforts to get a third major airport here in this area. Proposals outlining the Lake Calumet site were delivered to government officials just before a noon deadline. Meanwhile, in Indiana, a summit meeting between the Indiana governor and the mayor of Gary was held on the issue of a third airport. Our John Davis was there. After weeks of wrangling over who supports what and where, Indiana Governor Evan Bayh and Gary Mayor Thomas Barnes decided it was time to call their own superpower summit to clear the air. Barnes had accused Bayh of reneging on his support of Gary as the site for Chicago's third major airport and of shifting his support to Mayor Daley's Calumet site. Bayh today denied it. I support the, the Gary site and will support uh, that site which will create the most job opportunities for the citizens of this community, Lake County, uh, and Northwest Indiana. Period. Barnes says as far as he's concerned, by his word is his bond, and that all this may have just been a misunderstanding. The governor has indicated to me in very unequivocal terms uh, his support for the Gary site, that it's very important uh, for us to make sure that, that whatever breakdowns may occur, that we make sure that we communicate, and we communicate on a timely basis. But while Barnes and Bayh have apparently settled their differences, Mayor Daley and U.S. Transportation Secretary Sam Skinner remain at odds over the city's apparent refusal to take part in a bi-state commission studying the third airport. Skinner aide Kenneth Quinn delivered what some felt was an ultimatum to Daly to either submit his Calumet site for consideration with other proposals by noon today or risk going it alone, meaning the feds would not put up $5 million for a study of the proposed site. To bring a strong message to, the, uh, to all parties, to the state of Indiana, to the state of Illinois, and the city of Chicago about the secretary's uh, concern that uh, Tom is of the essence that we need to reach closure right now on the uh, on the third airport issue. And just before that noon deadline, the city reportedly delivered its response, which could allow the Lake Calumet site to be included in the bi-state selection process. The same process the mayor has said he does not trust to give Chicago a fair shake. John Davis, Channel 2 News. Mayor Daley has asked for changes in the structure of the bi-state committee. There is no word yet on whether or not those changes will be made. Most people know McDonald's for their hamburgers, but Italian food? McDonald's is testing Italian food at five restaurants in Pennsylvania. Lasagna, spaghetti, fettuccine, tortellini, all are on the menu. If the Italian offerings work at the Pennsylvania restaurants, they could be expanded to other restaurants around the country. Uh, sunny during the week, rain on the weekend. Can we break that cycle? Harry will be here in a minute with an answer to the question. Also ahead, Lithuanians from Chicago try to pressure Gorbachev to reconsider independence for their country. And later, a nostalgic look back at the comic strip that launched the new movie called Dick Tracy. In the rush of events that ushered in the new decade, you may have missed the news about the Sanka taste test. In it, brewed decaffeinated drinkers found Sanka ground tasted as good as Folgers' regular ground. That's right, a decaffeinated that tastes as good as a regular coffee. So if you thought you had to give up taste when you gave up caffeine, you haven't heard the news. Sanka ground tastes as good as Folgers' regular. Taste it for yourself. something else entirely. New West, the new skin scent for men by Aramis. Available at Carson Peary Scott. It was Stephen's first birthday party. It was happy and messy. The cake was chocolate, very chocolate. I honestly believed his jumper was ruined. I poured liquid Tide on the really bad spots and washed. As you can see, Tide saved the outfit. Sincerely, Lisa K. Matheson. If it's gotta be clean, it's gotta be Tide. 
It's a total, absolutely final clearance at New York Carpet World. These carpets already cut to $8.99. Final markdown, $5.88. Another group, premium carpets that were sale priced to $12. Final markdown, $6.88. Hundreds more, every excess carpet. Prices slashed without regard to cost or profit. To clear the decks, we'll give you padding free and credit free with no payments till 1991. It must be a total sellout. It must be done by Saturday night. Hurry to New York Carpet World. I love Baskin Robbins, but now that I've grown up, I do yogurt. You'll love Baskin Robbins yogurt. Non-fat and low-fat, all natural. <laughs>